Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. Apologies for the delay in this particular episode. That was because I was caught up in Apollo 11 anniversary stuff. But as it turns out, we are mostly interested in doing moon things in RP2000 right now. So it's somewhat appropriate. It still being during the 55th anniversary of Apollo 11. And when we're taking a look at what we might want to do, there is the possibility of scanning for resources on the moon. Uh, the survey scanner is right here in uh, this technology, space exploration. Uh, we can't actually make use of the information from that until we get all the way up uh, to here, advanced science tech, uh, where we do get drills and also the ISRU units. So then we can really uh, have a proper space economy, but that will require two VAB unlocks, I think. So that's gonna be a while. But we have unlocked the survey scanner, and so the thing to do would be to send a scanner over to the moon to see where the resource might, resources might be. And we should probably land over there with our first crew. That would be a place of special interest. But first we have to figure out where that is. And then we should look to the crewed landing mission. As we are upgrading the pad, to allow for a large enough rocket for it. I don't know about the cost though. We've got two million right now. Uh, we've got a lot of commitments though, right? Uh, we are looking at, we need to do a Deimos flyby, Phobos flyby, Jupiter flyby, science day from the surface of Mars, and position a satellite in a specific orbit of Europa. All these things have already been committed to and we our money has come from. So that's that's a lot. Anyway, here we have my scanner set. I have the little survey scanner on top. I've moved the antenna off to the side and uh, put an orbital telescope to counterbalance that. Increase the size of the solar panels just a little bit. Added some extra batteries. Increase the size of the transfer stage, which is still a hypergolic transfer stage, MH and Mon 3. And uh, otherwise, it's still the Odyssey rocket that we've had before and we are using three of the SE2100 engines from the SureStrut engine pack, and then the second stage has four of the SE2006 AVs, um, A being the more advanced version, and V meaning the vacuum version of that. So, that is our, oops, that is our package that we're going to launch on the second pad while the first one is being upgraded, and it'll take 32 days, and build. That Those fairings probably don't go there, but we'll deal with that later. There is a Mars window in the 206 days, and uh, Deimos flyby, Phobos flyby, and surface of Mars will be things we want to do there, but let's get this done first. As far as the launch pad upgrade, that's 158 days. So we could probably start building a rocket meant for that. So I think I have a prospective lunar lander here. Uh, this is a Lynx cabin, uh, not with the shell, so there's a lander version. And uh, so it can carry three people potentially. And we have a two-stager. I would like a one-stager for the purposes of uh, sustainability, if you will, because then we could reuse the lander. But right now we don't have engines that have that many ignitions anyway. And uh, the what engines I really want, we still haven't unlocked actually. So those will have better throttling and better properties and they're part of the Shearstrad engine pack. Right now, these guys are the unupgraded version. So the one I want is the SE1004A, which will also be a Methalox engine. Uh, this one is just 1004 and it uh, only throttles down to 55% for now. So also our rocket could do with some work, uh, but uh, for the first time, uh, maybe we'll keep it the way it is. And so we're getting 344 seconds in vacuum. So that's not great for Mephalox. I mean, it should be perfectly reasonable for Mephalox to get 344 seconds in vacuum and throttle down to 55% with a 39 kilonewton engine, and it's the same engine on the ascent stage and uh, as on the descent stage. Not great, but uh, it kept things tight so that it didn't become a tall lander. What I didn't want more than anything else was a tall lander. So 
this prevents it from being a tall lander. With the sure surround engine pack, we have Mephalox RCS. One motivation for making it methane and oxygen is the fact that the Lynx spacecraft cabin already uses methane and oxygen RCS. So that way I don't have to put extra RCS. So that's one, that's basically why. Uh, and yeah, you can see the Delta V's there. I was trying to keep it under 20 tons. That was the goal. And so we have a uh, lander with this kind of Delta V, but it's a long burn time for the descent stage. So I'm worried about that. Yeah, I'm worried about that. So anyway, that is the prospective moon lander. It's got plenty of food, water, and oxygen. We could lighten up on that. It doesn't need two weeks. That's usually for the orbital version. And so if we, let's say, cut that by a bit, we have better delta Vs as well, if I remember to do that. Um, I should do that on the rocket. Speaking of which, we have, uh, maybe I should save it here too. But we have the rocket done. I have decided to call it Buzz, in honor, obviously, of Buzz Aldrin. I mean, why not? Why not? There aren't enough Buzz rockets around. So what it is is methane and oxygen boosters using the SE2200 engines and in a core with hydrogen and oxygen using the rather small looking SE2150 engines. I'll have to review their sizing. I, I wonder about that. but. Uh, they're, they are sea level optimized and everything. There's four of them. However, the core is going to be lit in flight. The reason for that is to limit thrust to weight ratio. If we light it on the ground, the core will deplete as we go up, obviously. And so by the time the boosters separate, the thrust to weight ratio will be very high. Uh, so instead of having that, we are going to... I mean, I could light two of them, but... Uh, we're just going to wait a while and then light the core at a certain altitude where it'll end up with a thrust weight ratio of 1 at the right time when the boosters separate. And uh, we should be going at a thrust weight ratio of about 4 when the boosters separate is my goal. So I want, uh, yeah, basically the air light of the core is because of thrust weight ratio and that's it. Uh, after that, we have this stage which we had previously used on the lucky rocket the one that sent crew over to uh, uh, flyby of the moon and so these are the se 2140 v's they are highly vacuum optimized 463 second isp 361 kilonewton uh, hydrolox engines so sort of sort of weaker than the s4b stage and the thrust weight ratio is a little bit lower it does still complete orbit and then goes. That's the goal. Uh, the rocket overall is fairly light, under 2,000 tons, and yet still carries both the orbital module, the command module, and the lander here. The command module here should have uh, 3,000 meters per second, and it is methane and oxygen, uh, sorry, MMH and MON3, uh, so it's hypergolic. Um, interestingly, with these SE, um, one, uh, 004s, even though they're pressure fed, they read it all right if I didn't use the high pressure tanks, which seems to be an exploit. It's probably because this was already a service module tank, because it has to carry all this stuff anyway. So I suspect that it was sort of tailing off on that, but I didn't use that exploit. I am using high pressure tanks here, uh, though it was tempting, but. Uh, uh, we are not doing that. So, yeah, this obviously will help bring the lander into orbit around the moon. The whole, it's a, a whole Apollo thing for now. I say for now. Uh, I'll reconsider it later. But this was cost effective as Apollo was, so. This is the cost effective approach, but with the engines that we've got, there's a chance for something better later on. And as you can see, it's about 500,000 having an all-in-one launch. I was thinking about having two separate launches, one for the one for the lander and one for the pod, but we would have to make sure that the lander could capture into orbit on its own. That's a trick. I guess I'll save and continue. Um, and then if we take a look at the old, the flyby 
version. This is the flyby rocket with just the pod. Yep. And the pod is only uh, filled up. Oh, uh, yeah. It's only filled up partially. Utilization 13% instead of the full utilization where you're getting on the mission that I just showed you, the big mission. So with that, with the pod only partially filled like that and a 800 ton rocket, this thing was already 223,000, I think, when we put the fairings on. Those fairings are expensive. 224,000. So uh, that's... I mean, when, when you consider that the f big mission that's nearly 2,000 tons is just a little bit more than double that, at, at using two of these rockets, one to send the lander to the moon and another to send this over to the moon, and having each of these capture into orbit, I feel like the price is just going to be the same anyway. So I don't see any price difference in sending them separately. And then, of course, there could be boil-off issues with the lander. We would surely send the lander first, as, and the crew second. Another option to cut costs, though, and I didn't do it, was to use the Mark I lander can advance. I unlocked it. I unlocked it. It has a capacity of two and everything. It's only one ton. We're probably only going to put two in this pod, but it's 2.67 tons. Uh, so I'm really really being luxurious here as far as that's concerned. I could really take advantage of this Mark 1 lander can, but I decided not to. I decided to go with the more expensive approach uh, just to make it a little bit more legitimate and comfy. So, yeah. We will see how that works out for me. Alright, we are in daytime launch season and we are headed out to find out where we should actually land. So, SAS on. Throttle up, and ignition, and launch. So off we go with the scanner probe. Now, I'm not entirely sure the scanner is going to work exactly as I expected. Um, sometimes mods interfere with that, but we'll see. It always seems that the first time in an install, some mod is interfering with the scanner in some way, and I have to fix it, but we'll find out. I do have USI, which adds a bunch of extra resources. One motivation for scanning and trying to find out where especially ore is, is that I've made contracts that pay you to bring back ore from, say, the moon. So. I hope that those will be kind of the sort of recurring contracts that we could base a space economy out of for role-playing reasons, etc. Instead of just doing one-off missions to everywhere. So you actually have to make a base or have an incentive to make a base uh, where you're going to continually get resources from various celestial bodies. So that's the idea. And then USI adds other resources. And we could add contracts for those as well. Of course, those all the resources have a purpose. Uh, the ISR unit, of course, can convert ore into hydrogen, oxygen, or methane. Methane is sort of cheating on the moon. So, but I'll just limit myself and not do that. Some tweaking might be necessary because of the boil off. We have to make sure that we, when we drill for the hydrogen, we don't lose it faster than boil off. That would not be useful. I mean, uh, we, we need to drill it faster than boil off. All right, staging. And fairings. Even though this stage will have some left over by the time we get to orbit, we're going to just let it go. It doesn't have RCS on it. I increased the size of this stage to make better use of the launcher, but we're still not there yet as far as how big that can be. Okay, leaving that just suborbital and separation and ignition. Plenty of delta V here. Uh oh. But, um, RCS, please. 
Now obviously we want it to be polar, but we'll set that up afterwards. For now we'll just do a normal transfer. Like so. We can probably make use of this stage, but we have plenty of delta V for everything. Okay, and go. Yeah. Oh, we've lost communication. Great. Okay, we'll wait in orbit. There's a communication gap, I guess. Maybe some of our satellites need a revamp. It's been a bit. This time, maybe we should have something. Oh, but I passed the point. Uh, okay, I think we can still go. All right. Getting ready. And go. Well, a lot of RCS is buffing for some reason. Lots of yaw and pitch. I thought I had this balanced. Like, these were the exact same mass. That's right on the center line. There really ought not to be anything causing the RCS any problems. It's not like we have multiple engines either. Hmm, strange. Yeah, it's sure using a lot of thrusters. Well, I think I better spin stabilize. Just spinning in this vague direction here. Don't know how well the probe itself is going to handle it. Something seems to have some offset mass. Okay, well, now that is drifting away. Okay, uh, okay, okay, we've got, a, got an approach here. We could probably just use pure RC... Oop, it's paused. Just RCS it in. Well, we are trying to go polar here. I think, yeah, we'll wait until we're in the SOI and do that burn to put it in the right sort of situation. Guess I'll leave it spinning. All right, we are in Lunar SOI. I made the note a little bit into it. I'll use this stage to orient. Well, now one of the thrusters are busted, so... We'll dump the stage. I mean, I probably was going to dump the stage anyway. A little bit late, especially since it's trying to stop the spin. Okay, let me just dump it. Uh, well, maybe we were sideways somehow. That's an interesting collection of engines. Okay, hopefully it's balanced. Well, not exactly. What is up with these things? Oh, I want to get more of an inclination here. Okay, 85.8 sounds good enough. I believe we'll have comms at periapsis. There's Earth. We're fine that we have comms and ignition. Oh yeah, maybe maybe the scanner is just lopsided somehow. Or maybe this thing has its center of mass in a location that I didn't expect. Okay, we've captured. I think that should be low enough on the apoapsis. Let me check. Form orbital survey. Well, okay. It says it's done it, and we got some science too. Okay, or. Well, it's sort of around the South Pole, isn't it? <laughs> uh, it's sort of where it ought to be, it looks like. Okay. Um, I mean, assuming or is what we're going for, and the South Pole is sort of a popular place to go for stuff. 90% cutoff. It's, it's here. Unfortunately, it's on the side not facing Earth. That's inconvenient. It's very decisively on the side not facing Earth. 
so calm difficulty. But yeah, mostly down here. Probably this stuff would be easier to get to. What about other resources that might be valuable to us? Rare metals? Uh, well, not at that cutoff. Let's say 50% cutoff for all of them. No, no rare metals. Let's go from the top. Illumina, there's Illumina. Borate, up there. Oh, some down here. Um, but only in the locations that are facing Earth, therefore not where we have the ore. Clean water. No. <laughs> that would have been too much. Uh, dirt. There, for some reason. Exotic minerals? Well, th there's a bunch. Again, on the side facing Earth in the South Pole, or South Southern Hemisphere, we'll say. Fluorites? No. Gypsum? No. Hydrates? Yes, over here. So on the side facing Earth, but I don't know if we can convert them into water. I assume there must be something, but it might be higher technology. Metallic ore is all over the place. Minerals, very general, but not here. Whatever minerals those might be. Monazite, there is some. Only on the far side, it looks like. Oops. Only on the far side. Rare metals, not so much. Regolith, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, there is. Only in certain locations, though. Silicates, yes. Spudamine, yes. Substrate, only in that patch. Is that the patch with dirt? No, dirt's a different patch. And that's it for the resources that we have here. Okay, so scanner has worked. We'll just leave it here so it can help with comms later on. And we'll probably definitely need that. Okay, back to Space Center. So with the pad still being built, I would like to test this using the older rocket, the one that can fit on the 800 ton pad. However, uh, well, the thing I most want to test is whether I can land with this 13 minute and 50 second burn time. Uh, that's sketchy. But I don't think, the rocket certainly can't launch this over to the moon with it full, the fully fueled. Right now we're fully fueled. But let's say underfuel this. Well, then suddenly this has more delta V, and also less. Uh, it also has more thrust weight ratio, so that changes the d dynamics right there. So I'm wondering what to do about that. I mean, obviously we could underfuel this and underfuel that, but that ends up not testing what I'm trying to test. You know, this now this can get over to the moon, or I could use some of this stage to capture around the moon. Uh, you know, if I fill it full, but that's not... I'm trying to see whether I can land when the burn time is going to be 13 minutes and 50 seconds, which is a lot. Uh, we barely have a thrust weight ratio greater than the lunar gravity right there. Of course, in the end, it is. And it's important not to have too high a thrust weight ratio there, because remember, this engine only can throttle to 55% and it only has 10 ignitions so yeah we're sort of caught in a thing maybe it would be better to have additional engines or smaller engines the problem is that we're using methane and oxygen and i don't have smaller methane and oxygen engines maybe rcs thrusters but all the smaller things are hypergolic right so so anyway, uh, I, I have to think about that, and so I'm in a bind as far as what I would like to do next. Probably I should be preparing Mars missions as well. Uh, I'm thinking so much about the moon because I'm still in Apollo 11 mode probably. Uh, but yeah, I haven't gotten the Mars missions ready for that. Of course, probably for Phobos and Deimos, all I need to do is send the probes that already have worked over there. Uh, so we could do that, but we're not at the window yet, and by the time we get to the window, the pad will be ready. So there is an opportunity to send some, uh, build something and send something to the moon even before that using the other the 800-ton pad. Uh, well, anyway, 
I think I'll leave that be. I've introduced our lunar lander and the rocket that will hopefully fulfill the crewed lunar landing mission, which we haven't picked up yet. And I think I'll leave it here for this time. So with that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.